Sudha Murthy, The Gooby Diaries, Coming Home Chapter 1 A Whole New World The day I opened my eyes, I was surrounded by many balls of white fur. I glanced around and saw my brothers and sisters. We were all trying to drink milk from our mother. To our sweet mother licked us with affection. She also got annoyed when all of us wanted milk from her at the same time. I knew, of course, that she loved all of us dearly and I felt very safe with her hands around me. Slowly, all my siblings began to move about to explore my surroundings and I learned that I had many relatives. My mother, my father, chachas, mamas, kakas, cuckoos, and other aunts and uncles and cousins. Each of them were different. Some were big and some were small. We were on a big farm. There was so much grass everywhere. It felt so good. I enjoyed walking, jumping, falling and rolling in the sunshine. My mother stayed at a distance and kept a firm eye on all of us. Whenever strangers approached, she would shout out in a high-pitched growl to warn them, Be careful, don't touch my children. One day, my mother was away on a walk and we found ourselves in a big room that we couldn't get out of. That didn't bother us because there were plenty of space for us to play with each other. Within minutes, there was a commotion. I pulled my brother's tail and he pulled my ears. My sister intervened and giggled with joy. Suddenly the door opened and two men came in. One was young and handsome and other was old and gentle. Although they spoke a different language, I understood everything. The old man said, Choose your puppy Rohan. The young man looked at all of us and said, It's so hard to choose. They are all equally lovable, he said. But I can only adopt one. He sat and rested his hand on the floor as he wondered what to do. I looked at his eyes and I knew that he was puzzled. So I said, Don't worry. I ran near his hand and sniffed it. He smiled picked me up and held me close to his chest. He kept his other hand on my head and said, I want this one. I wondered what he meant. He kept caressing my stomach and my head. I felt so comfortable with him. He reminded me of the way my mother nuzzled me. In a few minutes, I was fast asleep. Chapter 2 I am home A sudden jerk made me open my eyes. I seemed to be inside something. I looked around and saw that I was in a big brown basket. There was a white ba blanket under me and another one on top of my body. I looked for my mother but I couldn't see her. I looked for my siblings and couldn't spot them either. I felt like crying. Where was my mother? Scared, I turned my face to the side and saw the young man who had picked me up earlier. He caressed my head and I re relaxed. I was not in danger. I licked his wrist. Then he said to the driver, Drive carefully. This little one is just a small puppy. And is away from his mother for the first time. He looked scared. Was he talking about me? I wondered, where is my mother? I want to be with her. I felt very sad. Where is he taking me? I thought. I could not sleep anymore even though I knew I was safe. A few minutes later, the car stopped. The young man picked up my basket and went to the front door of the house. I peeped out of the basket. My surroundings were not like a farm. It seemed to be a house with a very small garden. He rang the bell. Ding dong! Two women appeared out of nowhere. Rohan, you are home! They exclaimed together. So that is what the young man was called, Rohan. The women were old. One was thin and the other one was plump. They had a plate in their hands. Was there food on it? No, there was none. The two women rotated the plate around me over and over again. 
I saw a lamp on the plate too. Get the plate away from me, I said meekly. There is fire on it. But they were not bothered at all. They said, Welcome little boy, we welcome you with our ready and blessings to your new home. You are a member of our family now. What is the meaning of our ready? I wondered. Finally, they stopped and kept the plate away from me. The thin one took me out of the basket and left me on the carpet. Then three of them sat near me. Within minutes, another thin older gentleman came to the room, but he didn't sit with the others. He sat on a chair at a distance. Rohan said to me, This is your grandfather, Adja. Then he pointed to the plum lady and said, This is your grandmother, Aji. He looked towards the tin woman and said, This is your grandmother's sister, Tachi Aji. In that case, you are his appa, said Aji with a smile. All of them laughed, but Aja did not. It was easy to make friends with Aji and Tachi Aji. They held me like I was the most precious thing on the earth. They hugged me so tightly that I couldn't breathe. Somehow I managed to squeeze myself out of their grip. They exclaimed, Look at his skull lined eyes. Oh, his nose, so jet black. And his golden color. He is the most handsome dog in the world, Ajay declared. Ajay, however, Ajay, however, didn't say anything about me. Come and touch him, Ajay said to the Ajay. But I knew that Aja was scared of me. I could see it in his face. I laughed. How can anyone be scared of me? Come and give me a hug the way Aji gave me, I said. But he was not convinced. He turned to Aji and said, With hesitation, when I was a little boy, I was bitten by a dog. I had to get 14 injections in my stomach because of that. They were so painful and I remember them to these days. That's why I'm afraid of dogs and I don't want to touch them. But I'll enjoy seeing him from a distance. So what if some dog bit you? That was decades ago, I said. This is unfair. I'm not that dog and you don't have to be scared of me. When I spoke, Aji misunderstood what I was saying. She said, look, he is also scared of you. Pet him and reassure him. But Aja shook his head. I also shook mine. Whenever I spoke, the two Ajis didn't know what I was saying. But I always understood what they talked. I could read their minds, but they couldn't yet understand mine. They seemed to have a name for my language. They called Bark. Chapter 3 The Naming Ceremony I was happily rolling on the carpet when I heard a loud ringing noise. I had never heard a, such a sound before. I looked at the source of the sound and saw Aji standing there holding something strange in her hand. The small black thing was growing. When Aji looked at it, her face lit up. She said, The girls are on the phone. They seemed very excited. What girls she was talking about? And is that a phone? I wondered. Aji turned the phone towards me and I peered into her curiously. I saw two girls staring back at me. The girls screamed when they saw me. I wanted to close my ears. They were yelling so loudly. They said quickly, What a cute dog! One of them exclaimed, Very beautiful. What is his name? The younger one asked. We have not yet named him. Anushka replied Appa. We will discuss it and let you know. You must call him Gopi, said the other girl. Is it because your name is Krishna? asked Aji. Maybe, she said and smiled. Anushka said, even I like the name Gopi. It's short and sweet. They began discussing other things about me. But I got bored very quickly and turned my face away. Aji noticed it and said, he is tired and needs to rest. We will talk to you later, girls. She said goodbye and disconnected the call. I felt a little upset that Aji thought I was tired when I was not. I was in the mood to play. I tried to tell her that I was not, I was not tired, but instead she thought that I was hungry.
we will feed you. Don't worry, we are cooling the milk for you as it is too hot. She said and she patted my head. Then she turned to Tachi Aji and asked, What should we name him? Suddenly the focus shifted to what I should be named. But nobody asked me what I wanted to be called. I gave up, crawled under a chair nearby and drifted off to sleep. When I awoke, the discussion was still on. Appa said, I want to call him Circuit or Network. Aji refused. Certainly not. You can't call a family member by such names. Name him something simple and easy, said Aja. That's what was his only contribution. Oh, a huge debate began and Tachi Aji and Aji opened their personal diaries. Then they read out different names and looked at me to see which one suited me. The best. Duke, Raja, Rajesh, Muffin, Moti, Lava, Sash, Kujbi, Subkuch and Tommy. After some time I moved to the other end of the room. Soon I heard them call out to me. They must have decided on a name. Where are you? They said loudly. I realized that they couldn't see my ass. I was under the shower. I decided to have some fun. I could e- have easily slipped out from under the chair, but I thought I would hide well and see the panic on their faces because of me. So I kept quiet and remained where I was. Tachaji became worried. The main door is not open. Where could he go? The poor thing is new to the house. We should have kept a close eye on him. She began searching for me. A pup is like a baby, said Aja. You have to be more careful for him. Tachaji sobbed. Poor pup, he can't even talk or yell to tell us where he is. Aji, however, did not say a word. She went and checked behind the curtains. I was not there. She checked behind the door. I was not there. She went to the kitchen. I was not there. She said loudly, loudly, where he see? The bedroom doors are also closed. He must be somewhere here. Appa said, the best thing we can do is try to become his size. Lay down on the carpet and then search. The moment he did that, he saw my face peeking out from under the chair. I found him! I found him! He had exclaimed as he quickly approached me. He picked me up gen- gently. Aji came here, there, hugged me and said, We have decided to give you a very nice name. It's also the Lord Krishna's name and has been chosen by your cousins. Hello, Gopi! Aji held me carefully in her hands and pressed me tightly against her and said, You are my wife, Gopi, Gopicha, Gopish, Gopinath, Gopal Rao, Gopal Swami, Gopu. Chapter 4 A Burp in Time Tachaji doesn't talk much, but she is always busy doing something for me. Now she looked at me affectionately as I walked and jumped clumsily on the carpet and said, He has played enough for now. Let him have something to drink. That's when I realized that I was hungry. Very, very hungry. I thought of my mother's milk and remembered her. Her safe arms and her love for me. I felt sad. Tachiaji continued. The milk is just the right temperature. I'll feed him. She placed the blanket on her lap and held me like a baby on the top of it. Then she covered me with a towel and brought a bottle filled with something white to my mouth. At first I didn't like it. I pushed it away in anger. My mother's milk was so easy to get and tasty too. Why should I drink this? Tachaji patted me on my head and said, This is also good copy. Try a little. If you don't like it, I'll not force you. She added a tender in voice. But you are a small baby. We can't give you anything else. I felt comfortable with her and so I tried a small sip of milk. It was not bad. I took a second sip and the third. I thought that I had enough but as I drank more milk, I became thirstier and soon I finished the full bottle. Tachaji shifted me on her shoulder, patted me on the back and said, Burp, Gopi, burp. I didn't understand that what she meant, but suddenly a big sound came out from my mouth. Burp! 
Oh, he had burped, said Tachiaji. Good boy, Gobi. This means that your stomach is full. Now I understood what burp means. Haji took me from Tachiaji's arm and said, Let's take him outside the house for some time. But I refused. I didn't want to go outside. I saw a chair nearby. My teeth were itching so badly that I had to chew something. I went near the chair and began biting. Gupi, don't do that, warned Haji. Seeing that I was not interested in going out, they all went to the table nearby. I followed them and sat below the table as they eat their food. There were wonderful smells of oil, ghee, rice and so many others that I couldn't recognize. I wanted to taste their food. Haji, however, looked look at my eager face and firmly said, No! The doctor will decide what you should eat. I will write down his instruction and keep it in a diary on your food intake. You must follow it, Gopi. I begged her so much, but she refused to give me any of the good food. This is not fair. Woof! Chapter 5. A Trip to the Rat In the evening, Aji placed me in the basket and put me in the back seat of the car. Tachi Aji and Aji sat on either sides of me. There were two men in the front. Savant was driving the car and Karipa sat behind him. We were soon on the road. I wondered where the Ajis were taking me. The car stopped after a few minutes. Tachi Aji lifted me out of the basket and got down from the car. When we spotted inside a large clean room, I spotted many of my fellow bees. They were winning and growling and speaking all at once. Some of them sounded like they were in pain. I felt scared and clung to Tachi Aji and she took me inside. There were four dogs there. One looked sick and was winning loudly. Another was having a bath. He shook himself so violently that drops of water flew across the room. The third dog was large and sat silently to the side, and the remaining dog in the room was tiny and whimpered softly in its own lap. It seemed scared like me. I could just understand what each of them was saying. I don't want that place where me the sick dog was pleading as they held him on a high table. The dog, having a bath, tried to speak to his owner. I am frightened. I hate baths. The water level is too high for me. Won't you take me back? The big dog was calm and looked older and more experienced. He was eyeing a chocolate in a glass jar. He could smell it. I looked at the tiny log with dog with a confusion expression. Was it a cat or a dog? The tiny dog scolded me sharply for staring at her, and I knew she was indeed a dog. But she was small in size or a pup like me. Suddenly, a person in a white coat came near us. Aji asked, Dr. Gobi has joined our family today. How should we take care of him? The doctor looked at me. Put him on the table, he said. I'll check him. The sick dog warned me. This doctor is a monster. He pricks me with injection and I feel like running away. I didn't want to go to the doctor. I wanted to run out of there. I tried to squeeze out of Tachi Aji's arm but the monster caught hold of me. Come here, he said without waiting for my response. He took me and put me in the examination table. He is a very pretty dog, the doctor said. I will let you know how to take care of him. He needs vaccination shots and vitamin drops. He must be dewormed twice a year. The doctor continued to give instructions, but I could not understand all he was saying. The doctor said, You can buy pet food and biscuits here. He as Tachi Haji listened to the doctor's advice, Aji went to the other end of the room to buy my food. When Aji came back, she gave me a small biscuit piece. I ate it immediately. It was yummy. She said to me in my ears, This is as good as a chocolate for you. Then she gave me another piece. I was eating the biscuit happily when I felt a sudden prick on my bum. It was so painful that I stopped eating and 
fell tears in my eyes. I wanted to stand up straight, but the doctor's strong hands held me down. I couldn't move and wanted to buy the monster. Please don't trouble me, I said firmly. You are hurting me, but he didn't say anything. The sick doc said, keep your distance from him. He's quite messless. This morning he operated on me with a knife. I'll tell you a secret. Your people are not going to take your side. They respect the doctor too much. By the time he finished speaking, Ajib had began to massage me at the site of the heart. And Tashaji put another piece of biscuit in my mouth and held me gently in her hands. At the door, I turned and said to the doctor, I'll never come here again. Chapter 6 A Bag Full of Toys The next day, Abba came home with a lot of toys for me. They were of different size, colors, shapes. Some were hard, some were soft and some even made a noise. I jumped with joy and licked Abba. I played with all the different toys, but I got bored of most of them after a while. The ones that made a noise fascinated me the most. But after jumping on them and squeezing them to make different sounds, I soon tired of these as well. Then I spotted a frog sitting close by. I love hunting. It's in my nature. I jumped on him and tried to chew him. But nothing happened. I tried to beat it again, but still there was no response from the frog. Then I realized that it, this was not a proper frog, but a toy like that is. At that very moment, I saw a bone. I was very happy. My instinct told me, go and bite it and suck it. But this was not real either. That's when I knew that none of my toys were real. So I lost interest and sat nearby disappointed. Adi saw me and said to Appa, I think Gobi will be happy with natural things like fruits and tree branches and will have hard sticks to chew. After all, his ancestors have always lived in the forest before. Then she added with a twinkle in her eyes. He also might like chapels. At least Taji understood me. The moment she gave me her chapels, I chewed on them to my heart's content and broke them into pieces. Then she gave me a stick. Chewing it soothed my itchy teeth. Then I got bored and went back to Appa's toys. They were shining brightly in the sunshine. Appa bought a big ball and threw it, it in a short distance away. I chased after it and brought it back. Soon Ajay came to the garden and sat down on a chair to read a book. She tried to make me play with my toys so she continued to read. But I didn't like that. I wanted to play with her. I saw her dupatta hanging near the bottom of the chair. I sniffed it. How nice it felt. So I left all the toys I had and began pulling her dupatta. When she took it away, I went to the backyard nearby and saw the clothes that had been hung out to dry. I had found the treasure. I yelled and screamed as they swayed with the wind. The, swing, the swinging excited me and I began pulling the clothes down one by one. Aji came after some time and saw the clothes spread out on the grass. She looked at me and asked, what have you done, Gobi? She asked. I played with the toys, all my choice, I replied. She smiled and patted my head and said, Gopi, you are such a naughty kid. Chapter 7 Meeting the Girls One day, I opened my eyes and saw Ajay looking at me. Was she real? I had just seen her in my dream. I often dream at night and then wake up late in the morning. Ajay smiled. Get up, Gopi. Get up. It's morning. She said, You are going to have a few special guests today. Then she introduced me to a beautiful young lady. This is Shruti, your Didi. She has a lot of experience in handling people like you and has come today especially to see you. I looked at her. 
my way of knowing anyone is through their eyes and their smile i saw her eyes they were full of affection i sniffed in the air around her i smelled biscuits and i instantly knew that she was a caring person immediately she grabbed me and hugged me oh guppy you are such a cute she exclaimed after allowing her to pet me a little i showed my nose in her pockets i could sense that there were biscuits in there and i was right but now with a stern voice shudhi said not now guppy maybe after breakfast too i liked her a lot i could see that she would be strict with me she seemed like a loving school teacher she would give me love but if i made a mistake i knew that she would set me right i wagged my tail and looked at her and then turned to aji her eyes was filled with love poor aji she doesn't know how to discipline me that's why i take advantage of her but that won't be the case with didi just then i saw two more girls coming through the gate they must have been around 7 or 8 years old the moment they saw me they screamed ran to me and hugged me till i couldn't breathe give him some space girls he is very little said aji they stepped back and saw that they each carried a small dog in their hands were those real dogs can i play with them but when i went close and smelled them i found that they were toy dogs then one of the girls said i am krishna and this is my sister anushka these are our puppies mine is named dolly and other one is molly i loved and loved i could chew both the toys in under a minute but the girl seemed so fond of me that i decided to leave their puppies alone look at his eyes oh his ears are so pretty i wagged my tail so fast that they could hardly see it look at his tail it's almost like a ham fan i stood up so that they could see me more closely and admire me some more what a beauty he is aji look at his front legs so majestic and sturdy he's like a lion cub These are not my friend like girls I said these are my hands and of course they are sturdy and majestic I'm the king of the jungle and this is my castle I saw Savan coming towards me and I knew that it was time for my walk He is very devoted to me He maintains a log of what I eat when I eat when I go to pee and poop and reports all this to Aji every day Karipa gives me a company in the night and brushes my hair. I like both of them a lot. But right now I don't want to go for a walk. The girls are around and I want to play with them. Savan broke the leash and I dropped to the ground and pretended to be sleepy. This way he couldn't drag me out of for a walk. The two girls began massaging my stomach and said, "Be gentle Savan. He seems sleepy." I felt relaxed. I gave Savan the dirty look. How will you take me for a walk now? Didi turned to Savan and said, "Let him have fun with the girls. You can take him out later for a walk." I thanked Didi by wagging my tail. She laughed and gave me a biscuit. I wanted to move, but she refused and closed the box quickly. Chapter eight: Sharing is caring. Aji has a garden in her house. But I don't enjoy being alone there. It feels very large with big trees, green bushes, thin animals and birds. I am afraid that I won't be able to find Aji easily if I wander too far from her. I like go to the garden only when she is with me. Yesterday Aja came home with his friend. Aja's friend had brought along a stranger with him. We were both tied to either side of the main gate so that we don't get into trouble. Soon Aja and his friend went inside the house. I looked at this stranger and thought the gate she looked older than me. Since we were both getting bored, we began speaking with each other. I said, "I'm Gobi, it's nice to meet you. I must tell you that I don't like to be here myself. I like people. That's why I did rather stay with a company that than run around alone in the garden." "I'm Ruby," she said. I'm the opposite of you. I love being alone and I love going to the garden and sitting by myself. I found that strange. Why would anyone want to be alone? 
Ruby read my thoughts. She said, don't worry, everyone has their own personality and we should be happy with whatever we have. We started talking and we must have become quite louder because Savannah came and said, Quiet Gooby, how much are you barking today? When you talk, I also feel the same way, I responded. Aja's friend came back shortly and took Ruby away from him. I was not too sad to see Ruby live as I had Krishna and Anushka to play with. They had come to stay with Ajay and me for a few days. I love going with them to the garden. Ajay comes and sits on the bench and enjoys seeing us play. Today she picked up a ball and called out to me. Go Becha, bring the ball. Then she threw it. I ran behind the ball but on the way I saw a flower. It was beautiful and orange. I liked it so much that I forgot about the ball. In- instead, I went near the flower and plugged it. Then my eyes wandered to what happened to be a small pond with, the, with some other flowers. I just spotted these on our last visit to the garden. What nice lavender colored water lily, she said, pointing them to the girls. I jumped into the pond. I was about to eat one of the water lilies when I heard Aji sing, Don't eat it. I pretended not to hear her and ate one. Ajay became upset and ran towards me. But I was faster than her. I got out of the water and sprinted away and hid behind a bush. To my utter amazement, I saw a butterfly there. It had so many colors, blue, yellow, green. I was about to jump and catch the butterfly when Ajay yelled. Don't you dare to kill the butterfly, Gobi. The butterfly must have heard Ajay because it quickly flew out of my reach. Ajay didn't understand. Catching insect, insects came naturally to me. Aji reached me and reprimanded me gently. Gupi, I feed you whatever you want. Your tummy is full. Why do you want to catch the little in- creatures? Because it's fun, I said. But she just shook her head and said, You did better play with these girls that should keep you busy for some time. Just then Krishna and Anishka came running to us. I wanted to show them what I could do, so I began running into the other direction. They could not catch up with me and I was soon at the other end of the garden. There I saw a nice wet wet puddle with a lot of mud. It seemed like it would be a lot of fun to be in it. And so I jumped in it happily. The girls reached me. But they did not join me. They stood outside and said, You'll get all dirty now, Gooby. But I don't mind being dirty, I replied. I don't wear clothes like you that I need to change. My beauty is in my golden hair, my large eyes, my majestic legs, my shining fur and my strong tail. They had an odd expression on their faces. And as I I said this, and I realized that they hadn't understood me. Suddenly, I looked to my right and who do I see walking proudly by the neighbor's cat. And I was very upset. Why she has entered my garden? I got out the puddle and chased her away. I laughed and laughed when I saw her running away. A movement in the grass caught my attention. Next, how dare you come into my house? I yelled at the squirrel. The moment she heard me, the squirrel hurried, climbed the coconut tree and disappeared from my view. Upset, I turned my head and saw the little bird. She was driving, diving towards the plate of the greens and the pot of water that Ajay keeps in the garden in summer. For visiting words, birds, I leaped forward and warned her, don't come here, but to my surprise, she didn't listen to me. She came down on full speed, picked up a few greens in her mouth and flew away. Then she sat on the branch of a tree nearby and made fun of me. Now I was not just upset, I was also angry. I went to the tree and tried climbing it so I could catch her and bring her down. But I kept slipping down again and again. After falling down many times, I gave up. The bird, meanwhile, made several trips to the plate of greens and soon cleared the entire lot. Aji and the girls walked over to me. I felt ashamed. I wanted to show off but had failed miserably. Ajay patted me and said, Gobi, you must share your things with others. That poor bird has a nest on the top of the tree. She is going to give birth to small birds. You should not scare her away. 
you should allow her to take greens, be friends with her, share your garden with her, sharing is caring. As she began to walk away, but I didn't want her to go. I saw her dupatta within my reach and pulled at it. I loved sari palus and dupattas. I just turned around and gently removed the dupatta from my teeth and said, Gobi, I know you don't want me to live, but I must go to office. Come with me tomorrow and I'll introduce you to some new friends. I jumped with joy. I wanted to go to the office too. Aji smiled and went inside to get ready. I followed her. I can't wait for tomorrow. Thank you.